Well, this one's been a long time coming, but we finally got a full POV and layout reveal for Europa Park's 2024 roller coaster. It's been several years since Europa Park has added a new roller coaster. Their last big roller coaster, I guess you could say big, was Arthur in 2014, but that's not a thrill ride. Their last thrill ride was Woden in 2012. So at this point, it's been over 10 years since the big thrill coaster has been added. I know this was originally slated for 2023, but as I'm sure you're used to by now, delays happen. So it looks like it's gonna be 2024 for Voltron, or at least that's what we think the name is going to be called. That part has not been announced yet, but we got a full animation from Europa Park. They released it on their streaming service, VJoy. If you've been following along with this project, they've been posting a bunch of construction videos on there, almost like this whole documentary series. I highly encourage you to check all that out. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this layout, going through the theming, really what we can expect with this project. So first things first, Voltron is going to be located in the Croatia section of Europa Park. If you're unfamiliar with this section, it's because because it currently doesn't exist yet. It's gonna be located right in between Greece and Russia. So Greece is where you have Poseidon, Russia is where you have Euromir. They are squeezing this thing in and is going all the way back into backstage areas. We did get to see the full blueprints several months ago. We've known about this project for quite some time, but we didn't have the full picture. We only knew bits and pieces. Like we knew that it was gonna be built by mock rides. Europa Park is the mock showcase park. It just makes sense. We were originally under the assumption that this would be a mock rides Big Dipper. You might be familiar with the ride Lost gravity at Walby Holland. It features a lift hill, small eight passenger trains, and a very compact layout. This, however, as you are seeing, is very, very different. And according to the Mock Rides Facebook page, this is their first striker coaster. So it will not be a big dipper at all, which makes sense because this will not have a lift hill, it will have launches, and the trains are twice the size. They are not eight passengers, they are actually 16. Supposedly they'll have seven different trains for this coaster. That doesn't necessarily mean that they'll run with all of those at once, but this is a very long ride. We're looking at track length of 4,544 feet, or since we're in Europe, that's 1,385 meters. Maximum height, 105 feet, or 32 meters, and the max speed, 56 miles per hour, or 90 kilometers kilometers per hour. And it's going to do all that while traveling through seven different inversions. But what's so unique about this is that you don't experience all of those at once. The ride is basically broken up into two halves, separated in the middle with a turntable and a backward section. The backward section is short, it's pretty much just a spike, but it's very, very cool, extremely unique. And you know, one of the big things you gotta do when Europa Park has so many roller coasters is you gotta make it different from all the other attractions. And this ride is like nothing like Blue Fire. Now the Croatia section of Europa Park is not gonna be very big. I mean, they're pretty much creating this section just for this ride. I love the architectural style that they went with here. And the big centerpiece of this land is this energy tower. And this is really where you start getting into the central theme of Voltron, and that surrounds Nikola Tesla. So if you're unfamiliar with Nikola Tesla, he was actually born in the area now known as Croatia, so that's the tie-in with the land. He was a scientist who was way ahead of his time, like super innovative. His whole thing was trying to transfer energy wirelessly from point A to point B. So the idea with this coaster is that that's what you're going to be doing. You are now in one of Nikola Tesla's experiments as a human test subject being shot from one energy tower to the next. So there are actually two of these energy towers and each of them are half scale replicas of the real ones that were built in New York. And when you enter this beautiful looking Q building, this is like the original building that Nikola Tesla performed his experiments in. It was an old hydroelectric plant. So this is really gonna be a fully themed immersive experience from start to finish. So let's dive into the layout. First things first, we are starting with an LSM launch vertically. There are not very many of these out there. The main one that comes to my mind when I think of these is Wicked at Lagoon. That is a zero coaster. It starts off in the same way where you are accelerating level with the ground and then it boosts you up the tower. It's an extremely odd sensation, but it's really cool. But unlike Wicked where you then go over a top hat, this sends you into Voltron's first inversion. So essentially an inverted top hat. It totally reminds me of a Mauer Skyloop. Think about how that chain lifts you where you're hanging upside down and then detaches and you roll over into an inversion. So there's gonna be some serious hang time there. When you come down out of that element, you're actually on top of the roof. So it's only a slight little dip here because then you then go into your second inversion. This one's gonna take you fully to the ground. You're gonna pop up into an ejector airtime hill. That should be super awesome. There's multiple of these hills during this ride experience. You then rise up into your Immelman, twisting out. Once again, right up against the ground, going into a second Immelman. And this part is interesting. Your next inversion is a stall, but in order to get there, they send you through an LSM boost. I guess the train wouldn't have enough momentum to complete that element otherwise 
size makes me wonder how much of a boost that's actually going to give because in this animation it doesn't look like it's much at all this stall looks like it has some crazy hang time it'll be cool to see an element like this at europa park one of those moments that's absolutely nothing like any of the inversions on blue fire that's for sure you rotate out of it go into a pretty big ejector airtime hill banking to the right twisting to the left now getting thrown to the right this should be a pretty snappy moment and then you hit inversion number five which is a dive loop and that's what's going to send you up into the break run so that was the first half of voltron yeah i know if you look up you can see that second energy tower so you've made your journey via cosmic energy from one tower to the next and now they have to charge you up and send you all the way back this is the furthest point in the layout way into the backstage areas of europa park you're going to rotate 180 degrees so now you're facing the direction that you just came from you see the launch in front of you but you're not going to go straight into it you're first going to go backwards into a spike yeah most roller coasters will put that at the beginning of the ride but not here you then hit your full speed and go into your top hat this is is what i'm assuming is the highest point of the ride but i'm not 100 percent sure it could be that vertical launch and first inversion that we saw at the beginning of the coaster but while you're rising up pretty high it doesn't look like this is a particularly big drop it kind of more banks you to the left if you look closely you can see you're actually on top of a building right here you then have your biggest airtime hill on the roller coaster so this is probably going to give maximum ejector airtime which is good because that'll separate it then from silver star that's all floater airtime we need some ejector hills at europa park and it looks like voltron's going to have it following that you're going to descend down and rise up into this outer bank almost like a stangle dive but you take it in the opposite direction of what would feel natural so that should be a pretty wonky sensation we have another ejector airtime hill and then you rise up into a mid course so this is the only real part of the roller coaster that slows you down i'm not counting the turntable because that's like basically an element in of itself i imagine this is primarily there to help with operations you gradually drop off of that and hit this roll this is in version number six if you look closely you're now back towards that main plaza and Croatia, flying underneath some ruins right up against the ground. You twist to the left. We have this nice overbank right here. And then you have this corkscrew that is your final inversion. That is number seven. And then you pop up for one last little airtime moment. And then you hit your final break run. Welcome to the electric age. I think this coaster will be a lot of fun. I was initially skeptical when I heard that Europa Park's next roller coaster was a big dipper because I was like, okay, seems like a little strange choice when you have blue fire. And I feel like the better mock coaster that they could add would be either an extreme spinner or one of their hyper coasters like DC Rivals. But it didn't even cross my mind that the other option was, oh, well, yeah, we'll just come up with a brand new type of ride. And you know what? I think it'll probably be the best roller coaster at Europa Park or at least the most thrilling, which it sounds like that's the goal. Once again, proving that it doesn't have to be super tall or crazy fast to be the best. Because I mean, right next door, you have Blue Fire, which is gonna be taller and faster than Voltron. But you know, that was also Mach's first big roller coaster at the time. You know, we hadn't really seen anything quite like that from that company. So it's cool to fast forward to 2024 and they're debuting a roller coaster that just has much more extreme elements. They've really come a long ways. Their latest thrill coasters like DC Rivals, Time Traveler, and Ride to Happiness are just far and above those rides. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Europa Park is the mock ride showcase park, meaning they like to test new concepts and rides that they're coming out with at Europa Park so clients can come out to Germany, tour the factory about 40 minutes away, and then visit Europa Park and see all of the different rides that they can do. So with Voltron being their first striker coaster, fits right in. So let me know down in the comments below if you're excited for Voltron at Europa Park, what you think of this layout reveal, what part are you most excited for? Make sure to stay tuned for more analyses here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.